الحمد للہ رب العالمین العلیم الحکیم الغنی الکریم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد أي لحبة في الله I felt it was مناسب as I've been thinking about this for some time as a tribute so to speak to a great imam who I thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for allowing me the opportunity to have met him and at least sat in his presence for a, a brief time. And I have said this on countless occasions, he was one of the most profound people I've ever met in my life and one of the people who have impacted me with regards to my understanding of Islam and if you listen to his tapes or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored you to have been in his presence and attend some of his lectures or his muhadarat and lessons you would have found and you would find that he was the type of alim an an individual that strikes the heart with a sincere absolute passion and love for the Quran in the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and is it if you could taste the sincerity and i'm not exaggerating and this is my personal experience of witnessing this alim rabbani and The Sheikh Al Alam Al Imam Mukbil bin Hadi Al Wadi Rahmatullahi Alayh Rahmatun Wasiyah. He wrote, and I believe this was written as a treatise, as a actually not a treatise, but a a small pamphlet, and it appeared in the newspaper, if I recall, which was just to clarify what he believes because there was a lot of mystery in Yemen about who those Salafis are and people called them Wahhabis as, as what we witness today as well but especially in that type of environment because he had such a great impact on his society and really in fact around the world and that's from the Tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal. And so he wrote this, and I believe it appeared in the paper as a clarification so that they would not extreme, uh, uh, they would not claim that he had a new group or that they were terrorists or that they were extremists, but this was to clarify the Dawah of Ahlus Sunnah. And he had many tapes, even a famous tape called Dawah to Ahlus Sunnah, which is a very fantastic tape. And in the beginning of the lecture, he mentioned what what I will what sums up his call, and then we'll begin going over the introduction of this this book here, a summary of it. Anyhow, he said, "Dawa to Ahlu Sunnah, he a dawa tun ila kitabillah, min kitabillah." ومن سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم إلى سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. This is what the what Imam Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi said, and you'll find this in his tape entitled "Dawa to Ahl Sunnah." And what he said was just to clarify. This is what the 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 person who calls to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is what their job is. And this is what we do. He said, the dawah of Ahl Sunnah, the call of Ahl Sunnah, the propagation of Ahl Sunnah is calling from the book of Allah, meaning the Quran, to the book of Allah. 
and from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This is what Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi said, Allah yarhamuhu, and may Allah bless him with Jannatul Firdaus and forgive him of his sins and shortcomings. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen and us as well. Ameen. Ahabatifillah, this treatise is entitled Hadahi Dawatana wa Aqidatana. And we will go over the very brief metan in English, and I'll bring some of the benefits that one of his students, Abi Abdullah Musni'i, uh, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, he uh, wrote this book, which is an actual explanation. And I believe there's another one, uh, another explanation from another student as well. But this is very beneficial, and we'll take some summary summarize points with regards to uh, the Sheikh's small, small uh, clarification of what his belief and what his minhaj was, his methodology for understanding Islam and propagating Islam, and that it was the minhaj of Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, the Salaf al Salih, the minhaj of the Salafiyun. Abu Abdullah, he said, and he wrote this in Dar al-Hadith, Damaj. He said about the Shaykh's name, he said, Huwa Imam al-Mujaddid, al-Abid al-Zahid, al-Allama, al-Wara, al-Muhaddith, al-Nahrir, al-Muslih, al-Kabir, al-Naqida, al-Naqid, Al Basir, Al Alam Al Fiqi, Al Saram Al Maslul, Baqiyat Al Salaf Al Salih, Abu Abdurrahman Mukbil bin Hadi, bin Mukbil bin Qaida, bin Qaida, Al Hamdani Al Wadi, Al Khalali, Min Qabilata Ali Rashid. He said, after praising the Sheikh, saying that he was a muhaddith, a reviver, of the deen, a extremely pious man who was known for his worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and known for his wara, you know, his, his humbleness and piety, and that he was a, a major rectifier of affairs. And all of this, I think anyone who knew him and knew of his da'wah would probably not, degree, not disagree except those people who disliked him from the Hizbeen, from the Shia, the Rafida, the Communist, and many other groups, some of the Hizbi groups, even some of them, they respected him. They were fearful of this Imam because he and his da'wah that his da'wah was based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, with hum humility. He didn't have a lot of uh, wealth. And I recall the last time, I believe I saw him, he came into the room and I don't remember if this was in Sana'a or if this was in Damaj itself. And all the people stood up. There wasn't that many students. At this in in this place, and we stood up, and I remember him coming around the room, and he was, you know, sick at this time, with his simple humble thobe. I don't recall if he had an imam. I think he probably had an imam on, and you could see in his eyes. You know, he had a very powerful look. I stood up, I shook his hand, I looked into his eyes, and I recall also you could see the age as well and that he was a man of piety, not with a lot of, uh, I would say in his locality in Damaj, the raw sunnah, unlike I've, any place I've ever seen in my life, and I've traveled a bit. I've lived in Saudi Arabia, I've lived in Yemen, uh, I've seen some other, some African countries, and you saw the humbleness and that he didn't have a love for this worldly life what was most important to him was seeking knowledge. And then he mentioned that the village, the sheikh was born in Damaj actually. 
and this is in the north of Yemen, and it is in the east of uh, the province called Saida. And this side and Saida is where the Hothin are, are now. They've taken over completely, and it is predominantly Shia. This uh, this uh, province, and it has been for a, who knows how long. <coughs> And it's a very remote area, mountainous area. And the Sheikh was born here, and this is where he made the center for his tower, although it spread around the world. And those students who had the privilege and the honor to travel there would could tell you many, many stories of the difficulty to even get to this village and the checkpoints from the military, the uh, sometimes concealing yourself and garments and, and all these kind of things in order to get to that village and benefit from that Alam Rabbani Rahmatullah The Shaykh Hafidullah Ta'ala uh, Rahmatullah he was born in 1352 Hijri uh, approximately in Damaj he was raised up there and his father died when he was young so he was a yatim, he was an orphan and his mother died before he reached the age of maturity. The Sheikh began his seeking of knowledge in the library there in Damaj and uh, you know began reading and memorizing from the Quran. And along with that, uh, we have to understand that, uh, it was Shia, so the Sheikh was raised basically Shia, and and it shows you the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that someone will be raised amongst the Shia and, and be affected by that aqidah and the other aqa'id, the false ideologies and beliefs that were widespread, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored him to come to the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and become a major alim, and in fact, Lashak, I think that's not exaggerating to say Mujiddid, that he was a reviver of the Sunnah, especially in Yemen, and we'll read some of the statements of the ulama in the next sitting. That Allah blessed him to go from that, and that is the guidance, that's the hidayah from Allah. Someone can be, in, as we saw with the companions, some were enemies to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, then they became his closest companions, Umar ibn al-Khattab and, and many others. And so this shows the hidayah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah that he gives us ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah and we'll stop there and in the next sitting we'll continue on in the introduction talking about the shaykh before we get into the treaties and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and we'll try to keep this as brief and short as possible.